Well, good evening this Easter Passion Week, this Holy Week, uh, it being Wednesday and Good Friday being in two days. Um, I wanted to break from what we've been doing on Wednesday night and just preach towards that. I'm going to try and take a 30-minute sermon and give it to you in 10. So we're going to jump right into it. I want to read from you Isaiah 53. The text should be on the screen. Isaiah 53, many of us are familiar with this passage written 700 years before Christ, and yet it completely depicts the suffering and the crushing that would be upon him. Beginning in verse 5, he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastising of our well-being fell upon him, and by his scourging, we are healed. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, but the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him. He was oppressed and he was afflicted and yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to slaughter and like sheep that is silent before its shears, so he did not open his mouth. Now listen to verse 10 of Isaiah 53. But the Lord was pleased to crush him. That is an utterly scandalous statement. The Lord was pleased to crush him. For the past seven weeks as a church, we've walked through the sayings of Christ from the cross. We've gone through and we've pulled back details of all that occurred to him. Recall with me in your mind that he was betrayed. He was denied. He was beaten. He was falsely accused at a mock trial. He was blindfolded and spit upon. They pushed a crown of thorns down upon his head. They struck him upside the head, said, prophesy, who did this to you? They scorched him within an inch of his life. Wasn't even strong enough to carry his cross beam up the hill called Golgotha. They shamed him. They stripped him naked and they nailed him to the tree. They preferred a known murderer to him. They said, son, do not be like this man. And Isaiah 53, 10 says, yet the Lord was pleased to crush him. This is scandalous. Number one, it's scandalous because justice demands punishment to the sinner. Every one of us in this room admits to being a sinner. And yet each of us still has a very real sense of justice. Right? If someone steals an old lady's purse, you grit your teeth. If someone min, uh, tr- uh, mistreats the mentally handicapped, your blood boils. Right? If you mess with one of my kids, Papa Bear is going to come out. Justice demands punishment to the sinner. Do you recall what happened when, remember when David stole another man's life, he impreg- uh, stole another man's wife, he impregnated her, then he tried to cover it up with murder? Well, when Nathan came to confront him, and because he was the king, he told the story in parable form. David did not know the story was about himself. And when he heard the story, he rose up in anger and said, this man deserves death. You see, if you and I, each of us know and demand that justice be done, that punishment be put upon the sinner. If even King David, when hearing of his own story, rises up and knows there must be justice, then how much more the holy God of the universe? How much more does his holy nature hate sin? Does he not also demand justice? And yet the Lord was pleased to crush him. That is utterly scandalous. As he hung on the cross, they mocked him as the king. They hurled endless abuse on him. Save yourself. If you are the Messiah, if you are the king, as you have said, then why don't you come down and save yourself? The sign above his head read, King of the Jews. 
They put a crown of thorns on his head. They draped him in a purple robe, all mocking him. If you are the king, then why don't you do something? (laughs) Then we will believe. Yet he did not come down from the cross because he was willing to save others as they mock him and hurl abuse at him. It's the irony of it all. He is the king, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And he is the only one who could save himself. And yet he didn't. And Isaiah 53, 10 says, and the Lord was pleased to crush him. This is utterly scandalous. Second, because favor demands good for the righteous, not punishment. Simply put, guys, we desire to give good gifts to those who do well. Right? We love to, those who are righteous, we want to give good gifts. We don't want to punish those who do well. So when Ian was about seven years old, we had an electric scooter that we rode through the neighborhood. And we would charge it every night, and he had a blast. And one day, the battery just ran out of juice. Well, it was quite a bit of money for a battery. It was about 70 bucks. And Ian set out on his own that he was going to save up money and he was going to purchase a new scooter battery. So he got yards in the neighborhood. Uh, He started shelling pecans for one guy who heard that he was saving his money, okay? Then on top of that, as he's saving his money, he's giving his tithe to the church. And then his brother, they were at Walmart one day and his brother wanted a $10 lightsaber, And Ian says, I'll buy it for him. Well, the day came where he'd finally saved up 70 bucks for that scooter. Now, what if Ian had given me the money for that scooter battery, and instead I took that money and I purchased a paddle, and then I whipped him with it? Now, what an awful illustration! But it brings home the point. We desire to give good gifts to those who do good. We do not desire to give them punishment. Well, how much more so the ruler of heaven? Does he not love and want to protect? And does he not want the righteous to prosper? Yet Isaiah 53, 10 says, the Lord was pleased to crush him. Utterly scandalous. And most of all, because it was his son. Because it was his son. There was a video that went viral a few years ago of uh, a kid who was, he he was in cancer treatment and um, they could only have one parent that went into the hospital. He had to be secluded um, as he was going through chemo. And so that was mom. And so dad didn't get to see son for a really long time. Well, it wasn't for too long that dad decided that he would dress up in funny pajamas and go into the parking lot outside of the son's window. He would blast some music and he would bust out and the funniest, silliest dance moves that he possibly could. All the while, just wanting to see his son laugh. Just wanting a glimpse of sunlight, of sunshine in his son's life. And the the video went viral, right? The the guy was on uh, Ellen and all sorts of stuff. Why? It caught our attention because of the delight in the sun. How much more does the eternal father delight in his son? Lynn DeJong, who's now 85, recalls the haunting decision that her parents had to make in order to save her from the Nazis. Because at the age of eight, she was handed over to a stranger, never to see her parents again. Her yellow stars were unpicked from her clothes, and all she carried was a simple note written by her mother that said, although you don't know me, I hope that you will be a father or a mother who will please care for my child. How much more so, the eternal father, does he not wish to care for his son? Right, if you and I, being fallen sinful people, delight in our children, long to protect them, we love to give them good gifts, we want to take their pain away, how much more does the eternal father have affection for his son? 
And yet his son is humiliated and treated as a criminal. Yet his son is mocked and told to save himself. Yet his son is gasping for his each and final breath. And Isaiah 53, 10 says, and the Lord was pleased to crush him. That is utterly scandalous because you, the sinner, are not punished. And he, the righteous one, is punished. And the Lord was pleased to crush even his very own son. Now at this point, we are screaming for an explanation because there is only one motive that could ever make sense of such a scandalous transaction. There is only one answer to why. When all the cost, when all the price, and all the shame is considered, his love was greater still. He willingly chose to give his son to the praise of his glorious grace. Jesus was forsaken so that I will never be to the praise of his glorious grace. Jesus became my son so that I can become his righteousness to the praise of his glorious grace. In closing, would you guys sing the first verse of Amazing Grace with me? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was lost, Heavenly Father, we praise you. We praise you that you loved us enough to crush your son and that it pleased you to be glorified by your grace and by your mercy over and against your wrath, that you did not give us the punishment that we deserve, but instead you sent and you gave the righteous one on our behalf. We love you. We praise you. May we worship you this Good Friday and the sacrifice that you gave King Jesus. And may we shout in celebration and victory on Sunday morning, the day you got up from the dead. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.